All right, it's time to jump back in the Blood Raider carrier. Now, last time when I was flying the ship, I did show you a tanky build. At the time, we did not have the lightweight ship rigs, so I really couldn't do any DPS build on the ship. But in one of the recent updates, we have received the new rigs for the ships. So today I will show you the DPS build for this ship. And in the future, I will show you the DPS build on all of the other faction cares. Now, this is a Blood Raider ship. And we also have received the Capital Nosferatus and Neutralizers. Now the Capital Nosferatus and Neutralizers have a penalty and they don't really work against subcapitals. However, the Blood Raider ships have the Overload penalty as a Robonus, which means that in theory you should be able to kill the capacitor of subcapitals with this ship and if that proves to be correct then this ship is one of the one of the best ships for anti subcapital fleets now the rest of the stats on this ship are generally the same the astarte has a very nice defense this ship is primarily a armor tank, it has the armor bonus and it also has the armor plate bonus which honestly might be one of the more weird bonuses that I have seen in a very long time. Now let me quickly show you the new rigs before I show you the fit on the ship. So the lightweight ship rigs. Lightweight ship firepower plus 17.5% damage bonus. Lightweight ship range extender, it gives you 20% extra falloff and overall 20% extra range. The lightweight ship burst aerator minus 12.5% activation time adjustment, which means it increases your DPS. Lightweight ship flight accelerator plus 14% extra speed on the lightweight ships. And the last one, lightweight ship. Defense Enhancer plus 15% overall hit points on your drones or lightweight ships. Which is honestly very nice and you can do a lot of very nice combinations with the, um, with the rigs. Now of course it's uh, good to note that we still don't have the damage mods for the lightweight ships. I tried all of the other damage mods but unfortunately they did not work so you have to wait for the specialized lightweight ship damage mods and of course the flight the flight speed enhancers now i have 4.8 thousand dps which is overall a nice uh, increase now i have the classic blood raider setup full full on armor uh, armor tank rigs because currently we still don't have the damage mods but once we do get the damage mods, I will definitely be changing the low slots. And in the medium slots, I have a capital Nosferatu, capital neutralizer, a web, and the carrier defense module. Now, like I mentioned before, the capital Nosferatus should, in theory, uh, work on subcapitals, at least in the case of Blood Raider ships. So, it will be fun to check out uh, that and of course the web range is going to be very nice after all this is a blood raider ship now on to the rigs so at first i thought to uh, go with a single rig but at the same time i kind of wanted to test out what would happen if i were to use integrations after all this ship already costs like 200 billion so might as well go with integrations so this combination basically takes four of the rigs that I have showed you and I maximized the DPS, I maximized the alpha damage, I have extended the range and I have increased the drone hit points. Overall it does look to be uh, a very nice combination and overall uh, I'm quite happy with the current look on this ship. Now. The lightweight destroyers and bombers have the highest DPS 
And I have to say, the bombers seem to be doing really well uh, on the ships. I'm actually quite surprised at how good they perform. And of course, here you can take a look at the, the star stats. Overall, they orbit outside of web range. The destroyers also have webs, so they can be used to web your target, while the interceptors have points or scramblers, so they can be used to keep the target from warping away. Overall, the current setup for the Astarte is uh, with three slots for the ships, because the Blood Aiders really do need the medium slots in order to maximize their performance and have the mono experimental carry hanger hull mod which does seem to work really well and over here I have the classic capacitor rigs basically repli I replicated the build uh, from the Balgorn on the Astarte and well uh, I think that it would work really really well now as for the implant the Bombard and Thermal Circulation are the two options that you have. Now, the Bombard implant is going to be good if you want maximum possible DPS, because this implant can triple your DPS for a short amount of time, which is very important for missions, very important for running anomalies, and of course very important for PvP. As for the general units, I would go for armor repair, pass to battery performance, Nosferatu and neutralizer strength or Nosferatu strength but neutralizer range because sometimes you want to have extra range in order to kill the capacitor of that tackle interceptor from 70 kilometers. You can get some very nasty range on the capital neutralizers and since this is a blood radar ship it should, in theory, work against subcapitals, but we will see how that uh, will work. Okay, so I have the implant ready. Let me just quickly show you all of the other skills that are active. I have the remote reload, very important. I actually like the remote reload a lot. It does sacrifice your alpha damage and DPS, but it gives you the convenience to reload the, the bombs from a very long distance, so it eliminates the need to actually pull back the drones in order to reload. Again, uh, very useful for PvP, very useful for missions, and overall very useful for sustained DPS on this ship. Well, uh, that's quite an expensive armor repair. My armor was... Undocking. 1% damage that I forgot to repair last time and it took 18 million. Can you imagine how much it costs to repair the armor on this thing? Yeah, it costs a lot, so let's not think about that because I might uh, I, I might be I might feel a little bit uncomfortable thinking about how expensive the repair on this thing is. Okay, jokes aside, let me readjust the modules because the game loves to troll me and every time I dock my ship, the game decides to, you know, do this with the, with the modules, so I have to constantly readjust them back. Can be quite annoying, but at this moment I got pretty much used to it, so yeah, just a small inconvenience, but it's not a big problem. Okay, reactive and adaptive armor hardeners are enabled. 3.5 million hit points. Now, the hit points will be significantly reduced. Uh, the armor tank build that I had on the ship did give me a scary tank. Now the tank is slightly reduced because I have the DPS rigs installed. The carrier mod is active, gives me extra DPS, almost 6,000 DPS, which is a very nice improvement. 4.4 million hit points, 89, 85, 83, and 81% resistance. And of course we have the panic button, the damage control, which gives extra tank for 13 seconds, and now it's 13 million hit points, 96, 95, 94, and 94% resistance, which is still very, very nice for a uh, DPS fit. Now unfortunately, when I activate the drone bombs, the actual DPS is not shown, however the effect is active. 
So this is one thing that I really don't like about uh, this implant is the fact that it doesn't show you the actual DPS. The DPS is three times higher at the moment. So I have about 18,000 DPS on the Astarte with the drone bombs. And unfortunately, it doesn't even show the DPS increase or the damage increase when you go and look at the lightweight drones, which is unfortunately uh, a current ongoing problem that I really hope will be fixed. But the DPS is still going to be applied, even though it doesn't actually show you the actual DPS. So the carrier has some pretty, pretty scary DPS right now. Docking. About 18,000 with the drum bombs and about 6,000 with the carrier damage mode active. Now, as for the thermal implant, this is one of the implants that I really, really like to use on my armor tanks because it gives you extra 20% armor resistance on all damage types and it's pretty much usable on every single armor tank available in the game. It doesn't have to be a ship that uses rail guns. The effect is passive, so you get the buff from the implant and you get extra tank. Very important for PvP and very important for active armor tanks. Now, the general unit setup is about the same. This is one of the things that I don't want to change on this ship because it already works really well. And I believe that it might be the optimal build and optimal layout that you can use for this carrier. Extra armor is active, okay. Always make sure that you have the correct uh, skill active because the other skills are useless for a carrier. Only the armor, only the extra armor tank is uh, useful for, for this implant and for this ship. And now the tank is going to be slightly higher. It's basically like having one extra adaptive armor hardener active at all times. And as you can see, it already helped out a lot with the resistance. And now let's undock and let me show you the active stats on this ship. Undocking. You have a lot of options. Uh, you can even use the armor plates. However, I don't, I'm not really a fan of armor plates because they make your ship slower, but you can technically use them with the full-on tank build because the armor plates will actually give you over 1 million in armor hit points, which is insane. So these things are definitely meant to be tanky ships. 4.1 million tank, 88, 84, 82 and 80% resistance, which is already a bit better than the previous build in the, in the tank, of course. With the carrier defense module active, the DPS is almost 6,000, 5.2 million hit points, 91, 88, 86 and 85% resistance and with the panic button, the tank is 15 million hit points, 97, 96, 95 and 95% 95 resistance, which is honestly really good for uh, a DPS build. Now with with a full-on DPS build when we uh, get the damage mods for the lightweight ships the tank will suffer a little bit more but the DPS will be significantly higher so when the damage mods are available you can expect the tank on these ships to go down a bit but the DPS will go significantly up which is a very nice trade uh, for for the ships because it would be a little bit overpowered if you could have crazy tank and crazy DPS at the same time however it is kind of possible with the drone bombs to have very nice DPS on this ship okay well uh, already running a a mission that is kind of a storyline mission in difficulty, but it's not a full-on storyline. Now, I did a couple tests with the Nosferatus and I have good and bad news. Good news, it seems to be working against subcapitals and I did notice full effect uh, on the Nosferatus. It does recover your capacitor very efficiently. 
if you are using the capital Nosferatu on a sub capital ship. When I tried out the same trick with uh, with the other capital ships, the non Blood Raider capital ships, it did not work. So it seems like the overall penalty does does help to overcome the the sub capital restriction that the Nosferatu the, that the capital Nosferatu had on sub capitals. So. This thing is going to be pretty scary in combat because you can easily kill the capacitor of an entire fleet. Now the bad thing is that the uh, neutralizer does not seem to work uh, on the on the subcapitals. Only the Nosferatu seems to be working, and I also noticed that the Nosferatu seems to be less effective against cruisers and frigates but it seems to be highly effective against battleships and battlecruisers so you might not be able to kill the capacitor of a cruiser or frigate in one cycle so that's one thing that you should keep in mind now perhaps uh, there is the trick that the frigates don't, don't have enough capacitor so the effect is full is full power but uh, the the sheer low volume of the capacitor on the frigate might uh, make it look like it doesn't work which is a you know big possibility but at the same time it might actually not work because it's a small ship so that's uh, that is one of the things that you should keep in mind while flying this ship against battleships it works a hundred percent however against the smaller ships yeah might work might not work I'm not 100% sure, but I will do more tests to to get a more accurate uh, answer to that. But so far, it seems to be uh, in, a, in a very good shape, and I kind of like that it works. It makes the Chemosh a pretty, pretty terrifying ship that I cannot wait to fly. Now, the DPS is actually pretty good. And the damage mod combined with the Dromoms do help a lot at dismantling all of these ships. And I have managed to increase the clear times quite a bit and I'm very happy with the result. So far the DPS build seems to be working really well. Now you can improve the DPS if you use 4 lightweight ship slots. And you can get about 7.5000-8000 DPS with this ship. Now the sole purpose of me using the um, the three slots instead of four slots is the fact that this is a blood raider ship and you kind of need to have at least four slots on this ship for medium slots because you want to fit a neutralizer you want to fit a nosferatu a web and you want to have the carry defense module a blood raider ship without the E war modules is not a blood raider ship so in order to maximize the stats in order to take full advantage of everything that, that the ship has to offer it has to have at least four medium slot modules in order to fit at least one Nosferatu, one neutralizer, one web and of course the most important module on the faction carriers the carrier defense module which does improve the um, DPS and overall tank of the ship as well as maintaining the light with ships afloat because it does help at reducing the damage that the light with ships take. Now in combat that might be uh, might be working a bit different because the damage that your light with ships take will be transferred to your own ship which puts more stress on the on the armor. So, in the end, in PvP, in a PvP situation, I would still use the tank build. However, if you plan to use the ship for null sec anomalies, for null sec sites, for null sec stuff, for PvE stuff in null sec, then a PvP build would work really, really well. Now, I have a story to tell you uh, that I've heard that happened quite recently. One of the faction cares has actually been killed and was a anaconda I believe. The kill was 208 billion. The carrier was killed inside of a special anomaly in Nullsec. 
And well, uh, by what I have been told, the ship got tackled by a blue. Basically a blue tackle happened. So I would like to tell you if you're flying these ships, don't trust anyone in the Alliance. <laughs> don't let any blue ship near you. If they come near you, you kill them. That's how, that's how simple it is because I'm a thousand percent sure and I was a thousand percent sure back then as well that one of these ships will die that way and it happened so uh, again if you're flying these ships don't trust anyone outside of your closest friends inside of the corporation because there's a big chance that someone that's salty enough is going to tackle your ship and it's all going to happen immediately uh, they would probably call in for uh, a stealthy sign to be opened or you know another blue ship that sneaked in in the alliance or coalition that uh, is going to serve as a sign and they can easily launch a lot of capital ships a lot of dreadnoughts on your faction care so in order to keep these thi these things safe you really have to be careful and Again, don't let anyone that you don't trust near this ship. If they get close to you, kill them. Because there's a big chance that they, they're going to try and tackle your 300 billion -esque ship. That's uh, what I would do at least. I mean, I'm already known to, to have blasted the blues in the past. So yeah, it's nothing new to me. But if you're flying these super expensive ships, you really have to be extremely careful. Because again... It can happen, it already happened, so make sure that you fly these ships in 100% safe environment. Because, yeah, uh, losing these things is going to hurt a lot. And, yeah, let's let's not lose a 300 billion isk carrier, because, yeah, that's going to make news. And currently, they are one of the most expensive boats available. Now, when we get the faction dreadnoughts, yeah, I'm going to be eating that around, that's that's a fact. Uh, I'm not even trying to hide the fact that uh, the Chemosh was one of my goals, and still is one of my goals, because I like Blood Raider ships, and the ultimate Blood Raider ship would be the Chemosh, so that's one of my future goals. After all, I'm already saving Isk to get one, and so far doing a good job at collecting Isk, so yeah, uh, by the time that ship launches, I should be, you know, I should be very close to being able to buy one. Or manufacture one, because I already have a lot of materials and I'm also working on manufacturing skills. Now back to the good old uh, starter here. I actually really like the naming uh, of the new carriers. I already told you that before, but I, li I like to uh, say that the developers did keep the same naming technique that the EVE Online developers do and that's a very nice touch to the game I honestly really like that which means that there is so much stuff that I want to talk about but I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to talk about that because you know uh, no disclosure agreement I guess so I'm not really sure what I can talk about and what the stuff I, that I can talk about, but let's just say there should be some pretty good boats coming out this year. So, uh, and I'm talking about smaller boats, not the big ones, smaller ones. So let's just keep it at that. That's what I heard, so we will see what will happen. Uh, we will see what will happen. So, how does the Astarte work now with the DPS build? Well, I'm having a blast flying this ship. Unfortunately, my phone here is not having a blast. For some reason, the frames are dropping so hard. It's actually making me mad a little bit because usually uh, this thing runs smooth as butter. So, I will have to turn on the temperature monitor in a second just to see what the hell is happening under the hood of this thing. It's probably because, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's because I have the alt account running in the background. I always have the alt account running in the background because it's very easy to to tackle stuff, and I can easily swap to the main account to kill 
the targets because I usually it's it's actually funny because uh, recently I really started to push my phone to its absolute limits. Uh, not really sure why I started to do that, but uh, I started to use like two or, or three accounts uh, almost every time. So perhaps it will be time for a new device very soon. I don't know. I'm not really not really that let's say attracted to the new to the new phones that have been released. I feel like I can wait one more generation of chips to go through and perhaps next year I might actually uh, decide to change my current device because it does run very very smooth. It just does these little weird things when when it feels like it. It's like this phone has a will on its own. So uh, yeah, it adds it it adds to its character a little bit, I guess. But still, the carrier does eliminate all of these ships with ease. Now I'm starting to think that having dual Nosferatus is actually better than having the neutralizer. However, the neutralizer is useful uh, in its own way. So I would say if you if you like to run encounters missions in Nolsec or other, uh, I guess anomalies. Uh, dual Nosferatus might be the way to go because you want to be able to sustain your capacitor for as long as possible. And of course, since this is a Blood Raider ship, you are probably not going to be using a lot of capacitor batteries. Now, I have that one capacitor battery installed because using more than four of the same modules is kind of pointless of because of the because of the effect that, because of the penalty that you get from using multiple modules, basically three is the best, four is a little bit overkill. I actually thought about slapping a fourth adaptive armor hardener, but I feel like having a, having a capacitor battery is actually a bit more productive. Uh, you can save your capacitor if you're using the neutralizer, you can save the capacitor if you're using the armor repair, so the capacitor battery in its own way has a bit more use than a force adaptive, but uh, in the future when we get a, let's say, damage mod for the lightweight ships, I will definitely swap the capacitor battery for the damage mod because that would further improve the DPS on this monster and uh, that will further improve the DPS, further improve the performance and overall it will enhance the experience in flying these ships. Now. Before I accidentally make a mistake and say that you go run low sex storyline missions, don't run low sex storyline missions with this. If you are planning to use this ship, I'm 1000% sure that you would be using it in low sec, in basically uh, safe space, in safe areas where you know that you have your corp mates at your side. I wouldn't be trusting alliance uh, alliance members still basically yeah uh, blue tackle exists so th there's less of a chance to get tackled if you are surrounded by your corp mates because there's a big chance that you trust your corp mates a lot more than your alliance mates at least that's uh, in that's from my personal experience honestly I know a lot of spies a lot of blue tackle likes to sneak in the alliance and then uh, from there they can easily collect intel they can easily see what you're doing and well they can easily tackle your very expensive ship i have seen it happen i've heard it happen and it, i believe it actually ha it's happening all the time nowadays so it's very important to be very safe however with a blood radar ship i would I would feel, you know, uh, very safe. Now, back in the day when the Balgorn used to be pretty damn scary, there was a saying that if there is a Balgorn on grid, you run, and rightfully so, because that thing is nasty. It used to be very nasty. Nowadays, it's very, very easy to take out a Balgorn. Now, when this thing lands, it might you know the same rule might apply to it as uh, with the Balgorn in the in the good old days 
and when the chamosh is released the same rules might apply to it as well so there is definitely a lot of potential uh, for these ships it, it's definitely going to be very let's say epic to have them on the grid and i'm definitely looking forward to to launch my my chamosh into combat my apologies for the little cut there i had to go and open up the temperature monitor just to see what's happening internally and yes the this potato is actually throttling you can see the temperature on the gpu drop from 70 to 57 which is uh, definitely not its optimal working temperature usually it, it stays up to 69 70 75 in some game games it likes to go up to 95 but yeah let's let's not let's not go there it goes very hot when when i have the alt running at the at the same screen one trick to eliminate throttling is to quickly swap tabs then for some reason it goes full speed again until it throttles back so yeah that's one trick how how you can deal with a throttling device now in my case it's not a surprise that it's throttling i have some custom settings installed i have some other things running in the background that enhances the graphics so yeah not really a surprise that it gets warm but uh, enough of that for now uh, i think i'll do i'll show you the the setup that i use at one point and the settings that i use it's very useful it's very useful to have the the game's graphics enhanced the game actually looks very pretty the game is very 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 pretty especially with the last graphics update that the developers have done so still running the mission i think this might be one of the last waves now you might be asking me what is the faction care with the highest dps and this is a good question because i believe uh, the blood raider one has the lowest dps or second lowest dps if not the lowest the anaconda might have the lowest one the highest dps definitely will go to the villain and the second highest will definitely be going to the vazago because these two ships they're definitely uh, going to have much much higher dps i expect the vazago to hit about 9000 and i expect the villain to hit about 12000 so technically the villain with the drone bombs can have about 34 to 40000 dps for a short amount of time which is pretty good and uh, i'm very excited to see how how that will look in in real use uh, after all i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are interested to see which one of these ships is going to print more isk i already know what most of you want we all want isk me included so let's find out which one of these ships has the nastiest dps now in the classic blood raider fashion the blood raiders don't usually rely on their dps they rely on the Nosferatus and neutralizers to kill the tank of the target so that they can easily dismantle them uh, with the with the turrets or or in this case with the lightweight ships which is honestly a very brutal way to kill your target basically uh, it's the equivalent of removing a shell of an insect and then just squashing it that's what that's what the blood raider ships do to the tank of the of the target and yeah a very brutal way to go indeed uh, and that's why i love these ships they're so nasty sometimes they're so nasty and so scary uh, that it just makes me want to fly them Unfortunately, I haven't been flying a Blood Raider in a very long time, mostly because uh, I'm saving up ISK to get that Chemosh. Which, you know, there is no exact date on when it will be released, but we all know it will be released, so uh, we are just patiently waiting for the, for the announcement, which 
My expectation is in about six or seven months from now, so not any time soon. So if you want to save up for the for that thing, you have enough time to do so. Just make sure not to be losing ISK. Uh, I'm trying to tell that to myself every day because at one point, you know, sometimes I'm just looking at the market, looking at, at that very tasty Bargast or at that very n tasty Nestor just sitting there on the market with a very affordable price currently for me. So, yeah, uh, tough not to waste ISK on ships because, yeah, that's usually how things go. So we have to resist the urge to, to dump the ISK on something very bling. After all, the ship that I'm saving for is extremely expensive. It's going to be extremely expensive, that's my expectation. After all, look at how much the high-angle weapons cost. Everyone knows what's coming. Even the Revelation started to be on the market very expensive because the Revelation is going to be used as a material source for the Tremosh. So, everyone knows, I, I guess everyone tunes in to listen when I'm talking about the Tremosh because everyone knows what that thing can do and rightfully so, it's a very nice ship. So, I'm slowly finishing up with this mission and I have to, s I have to say, this thing is definitely working really really well with the DPS rigs absolutely usable with the DPS rigs. It doesn't really suffer that much uh, in the tank if you go full on DPS. There's definitely going to be a big, a big difference if you are using it for PvP. The tank will go down faster, but in PvE you don't have to worry much about the tank. So if you would like to roll one of these monsters for for encounters for anything uh, PVE related in Nullsec, then you can easily do so. It does work really well. As for the implants, depends what you prefer. If you prefer tank, then thermal circulation. If you prefer DPS, then you can easily go with the drone bombs. The drone bombs seem to be working really well at the moment, and you will definitely notice the DPS increase on the lightweight ships. Still, I'm kind of sad that you can't really see that DPS. Uh, you will still do the DPS, but you will not see the DPS on the fitting window, which is uh, weird, but I'm pretty sure the developers are aware of it, and they will be fixing that. But... My experience with this thing, very nice, uh, very very good ship, very scary ship. And if you have a Archon laying around, Warp then you can active. easily use the Archon to make the uh, start out of it. Or if you have an extra care, then you can easily use the extra care to make this thing. While you can also keep your ordinary care for for any other purpose. In case, you know, uh, that there is a danger of losing this thing, you can easily use the normal Imperial carriers, because I would actually rather lose a normal carrier than this thing. Uh, and I, I would not even complain if I would uh, have to sacrifice a normal carrier in order to save this, th this ship. But in any case, uh, feel free to tell accepted. me what you think about this ship with the DPS built in the comments down below. I'm very... I'm always very happy to read the comments, always very interested to see what you guys think and I really hope that you enjoyed this little run with the Astarte. If you would like to support me then feel free to like and subscribe and well with that being said, this ship is a monster, uh, really really uh, a very very big monster and overall uh, I'm very happy with the performance and with the results. So with that being said, I uh, hope you all stay safe and of course uh, fly safe and I'll see you next time.